Bismillah, was salatu was salam ala malla nabiya bada. All praises is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nourisher, the sustainer, the capacitated matter of creation. Love if we are welcome back to my YouTube channel, Soldiers of Islam Media with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In fact, today's video is not uh, the usual video. In fact, as you can see how my face is, forgive me. Uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, in fact, today's video, I am really, really upset. Of uh, uh, really, that's why I came to make this video. And uh, let me run it quickly. Now, the video is about uh, Wesley girls, Wesley girls in Cape Coast, uh, the senior high school in Cape Coast called Wesley girls who denied a Muslim girl in the school. In fact, she, she was even a new student in the school. She was denied not to fast the month of Ramadan. And uh, if you people have been following very closely, the same school denied Muslim students not to pray, not to wear the hijab, and subsequently also not to uh, in fact, read the Quran. Now it came in the news. This news has been circulating like uh, like two days now, and I think that is very very important for me to also say something about this. Now, if you people know Wesley girl very closely, it was a missionary a school. It was a missionary school, and it's still a missionary school. So their main aim is to propagate Christianity. In fact, if you look at through history, they if you can even through history, they came into Ghana from the 18th century, if I may say right, in the 18th century. Now, let me talk about history a little bit because this issue is this issue is very very important. You know, Muslims and Christians have been living in harmony, in peace. In fact, because of that uh, kind of peace and harmony between uh muslims and christians in ghana in fact it it has made ghana as one of the what the peaceful country not only in africa but in the entire world why because we understand each other and it is even improving our democracy now let's look at islam you know if we can set back well or if you can go back into history if we study the journey of islam into ghana it it will vividly or it will clearly state to you that islam came to ghana in the 11th century which there's no doubt about that islam came into ghana in the 11th century now how did islam uh, entered ghana now it came to ghana through the northern part of ghana through traders two traders especially through these nigeria traders who came some even said that some arabs also came from algeria and other places if you read through the history now that is how they came to ghana they started pre uh, doing their buying and selling At the same time they begin to propagate uh, islam which is a very nice thing peacefully you propagate your religion peacefully now let's go to the other religion which is christianity how did christianity enter into what into ghana <laughs> that also if you people can believe or set me right christianity came through the missionaries what was the purpose of this man missionaries who came don't forget when the white people the slave masters came to ghana their main aim is to what is to buy slaves and send them to europe america and other other uh, european countries now when they came for them to back their work they came with missionaries to also propagate to get with the bible to also propagate christianity so you people through history even if you look at the castle the two main castle elimina castle and cape coast castle like this castle you can see that even through history they will tell you that the churches are on top and the what the gangent are underground where the slaves are under in the in the gangent the slave uh, the the church is on top so people were preaching on top and and the 
uh, and uh, slaves are under which is very weird you preaching christianity yet you are into what into slavery which is very bad way of what spreading such a religion like christianity so these white people brought the bible brought these missionaries came started preaching they started first they started building schools they started building uh social amenities to support their work their missionary work that is why we have different kind of what we have the anglican we have the catholics we have uh, uh, uh zionists and other uh, 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 missionary schools which is something very good to help to improve a country because as far as as we bring christianity you supported it with some kind of social amenities to help improve or support the community which is a very good issue since then islam and christianity has been growing gradually mm. or uh, uh, wiping away the the way of life or the way the going because the way they used to live which is the traditional way of living from the northern part to the southern part you understand they used to like the same traditional way that is how they live but as fi finally they adopted the foreign that's how i call it the foreign religion and also other people also adopted the is uh, islamic religion so through that through religious tolerance and other things we're able to live in coexist in harmony now if such schools are now turning their back towards us that today they want to enforce us to enforce on us to tell us what to do we muslims like in their schools these missionary schools we are not allowed to do what our religions teaches us and don't forget that school is a public school it's not a private school wesley girls is a public institution which is governed by ghana educational uh, education service you know so if you are denying a muslim girl not to take her religious responsibility just because it is a missionary school this is very bad in fact let me read out what is the, uh, this is the news stop ramadan fast or be withdraw from school was it girls miss a uh, headmistress to muslim students now let me read the news now wesley girls senior high school in the news once again this time around for the introduction of another school rules uh, targeting muslim student fasting in the holy month of ramadan it means they were once again in the suit they felt i told you they were not in this news not for once they were in the news forcing muslim not to wear, wear hijab on campus that is one secondly they were forced muslim not to pray now let's continue the headmistress of the school has ordered all headmistress led by the senior house mistress to ensure no muslim student is allowed to fast any muslim student caught fasting is to be what to face the disciplinary committee where the student could be withdrawn or suspended for a week period according to the headmistress this decision is being taken in is being taken in the best interest of student or, or student of the school this comes after my news gh.com earlier reported a quran ban in this public second cycle school the authorities also banned all muslim students from worshiping and wearing hijab on campus even for prayer this is very bad really this is very very bad now when this issue pop up many people start talking people were tweeting people were on uh, were on instagram other people were also on facebook backlashing and in fact uh, most of the muslim community would they were very very hurt even the uh, muslim community were very very what hurt and in fact they were boiling inside uh because you know let me explain something bit please uh, uh, so that it's not something but something little bit about the concept of for the non-muslim who don't know how valuable how we hold the fasting in high esteem now islam we have our five pillars the five pillars of islam which you people know the shahada the testification of faith that is what uh, uh, the first one the second one is what a salah the prayer the five daily prayer the third one is what 
uh, uh, siyam that is the fasting then we have the zakat then we have the hajj these are the five strong pillars of islam which all of them are equally one uh, important as the other now the first one which is the, the, what will bring you into islam that is the testification of what faith the second one is the salat is the same as the first one and the third one is what as zakat removal of arms giving what charity that is what yearly charity that one is also equal as the first and the and all and even look at the psalm which is what which is the fasting of ramadan which is another one is the same as if you are telling somebody to stop fasting it is like telling him or her not to pray the five daily prayers if you are telling a muslim lady not to fast it's the same as telling her to omit or not to believe in the article of faith that is the first uh, 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 testification that is the first pillar so for this woman to come out to say no muslim lady should fast because it is to prevent the or it is in their own interest don't forget that this uh, school they are the same people who stop muslim ladies not to wear hijab on school so it is like they are directly that this one is not indirect now they are directly attacking islam showing their their what their hate against islam this is the reality nobody should hide anything here it is very clear that they are trying to show their hate hatred in what in the religion of islam because they started by what by preventing muslim ladies not to wear hijab not to pray and not to even read the quran now it is the month of ramadan which is very dearly to each every muslim uh, 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 person as far as you are what you are okay you are you are not insane you are not mad there are people some people were exempted from fasting which is another topic in fact i saw one of the is it uh, uh one mp if i'm not mistaken here is an mp on joy news also making some comments on that please let's watch it and come let's watch because he was making some important points on that in fact and i was very very happy that we have such people who are also making comments on such uh things like this is very very important let's listen to him and come back uh, because of the discussion we're having right before going on i'm mm. going to put this to mm. you there's that situation about a student at wesley girls high school mm. uh, who supposedly allegedly mm. has been prevented from uh, fasting and we were talking about the situation uh, what is your take on uh, the matter i'll start with you um i'm thinking good morning to your viewers and then i'm good morning to the good people of okan queen of um it's 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 a very um um uh, quite dicey situation i i didn't get to know of it till i got inside here this morning but i think that um institutions and schools have found a way to work around this whole thing when you have students especially in the month of ramadan mm -hmm. um which is a holy month which which muslims hold very very dear and it's so crucial to our, our very practice of our very religion um, schools have found way around it and so for me to hear that a school is preventing a student from fasting I think it's, it's way beyond um, 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 I, it's not anything I could agree I, 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 I was in a, in a, in a Christian school um, for seven years and we, we always found um, ways to work around it that suited the school and suited us also Muslim students and, and it, it never came up for um, with any sort of acrimony or anything. So I think that they, they, this, this, this matter should be addressed and it should be addressed quite swiftly. The, the, the question no, is the how. The question how? is the how it ought to how? be addressed. There have been allegations that supposedly uh, sometimes Muslims are not allowed to you know, practice uh, fully in the school. But of course, these are, mind you, allegations. And uh, we also need to know exactly what the school, the headmistress has been saying on some of these matters. Mm. But uh, as it stands now, from what we know, 
I, I, I guess I just hope that there remain allegations because um, it's not. It, I don't think it's calling upon the school to commit any extra resources to uh, to, to to facilitate them fast enough. No, what we did was I was in boarding school in 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 in, in Persec was that even if the, the the pantry or the matron we had some arrangements so that our food was made and that's that's all it takes. It doesn't take a lot for you to allow the students. They will partake in school activities as normal. So I am really finding it difficult to, to accept the situation um, going on in uh, a very prestigious school like Wesley Girls. I think that the, the matter should be should be dealt with and, 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 and done with um, quite, quite swiftly. We shouldn't allow some of these things to, to cause um, issues in, in our national life. Like, like if, if, it, if, it, if it turns, if this turns out to be true, we had Achimota in a dreadlock situation that has been of course the Sorry, court before, is dealing with that say, you see the situation in Achimota had nothing to do with religion it had nothing to do no, with I just brought that up because that's another prominent school that has been in the yes but I, I just want to make the point that it has nothing to do with point, religion point well that's made it. but here we are with another big school uh, in the news and this time it's about religion your take and, and if it turns out to be true what do we do it is not an allegation this is a fact and your it's station, not an allegation. It's not an allegation. You say it's a fact. It's a fact, yes. Your station carried the story. Mm -hmm. The extent to which the parent drove to the school. And I guess that, that the is journalist true. interviewed him and interviewed the student. Mm -hmm. I think this intolerance must stop. This is a secular state. And we are dealing with a public institution. Of course, the genesis of that institution was not a public. It was a Christian missionary school, which is now a public institution. I had the privilege opportunity to have taught at least one year at Ghana Lebanon Islamic Secondary School. And I remember vividly that we used to have Fridays, you know, Islamic preachers. At the point, the head of the institution was, I guess, an Algerian at that time. They wanted to insist that those who were non-Muslims should also participate. And I stood against that and I challenged that decision that they didn't need to force Christians to participate in that. And they had to listen. Because you can't force anybody. Has that so changed they, since you left? Yeah, oh, it has. In fact, that changed. changed. When I insisted, they had to call. And there were other tutors in the school who supported the position I took. So I have a history of fighting against that. Why? In Islam, fasting is one of the most important pillars of Islam. There are categories of people who are supposed to fast. And it's compulsory that if you are not, in fact, those who are exempted from fasting, it's a woman who is pregnant. And if she fast, it would affect the baby because you need to diet well and eat very well. Mm. A nursing mother, if you know that fasting can affect the, the production of milk, a very old person who fasting can affect his or her life, and someone who is terminally ill. And those people under that circumstance, the terminally ill person or old person, would have to find someone to be feeding. This is how important that fasting is. Oh. The pregnant woman who is not fasting in that month of Ramadan, after she delivers and finish, you know, breastfeeding the baby, she is comp it's compulsory for her, for her to pay that 30 or 29 days. So it is... Un is, is that the... Is it zakat or is it... No, the, not zakat. Uh, if, no, not zakat. If a it's, pregnant it's woman... No, yes. If a pregnant woman is pregnant, she is exempted from fasting at the time. Because if she fast, it can affect... The, the unborn baby. But after she delivers and finishes breastfeeding the baby, she has to fast. A nursing mother is not, is supposed not to fast. Because if she fasts, it can affect the production of milk. Okay? If you have a nursing mother who have the kids on 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 this uh, nan one or nan, the, the SMEs, that person can fast because it is not it wouldn't affect the production of milk. Even with that, after the breastfeeding of the baby, she has to pay that. It tells so, you how, so, so, so it how does this, how, how does this come, affect? Come that it tells you how important. Right. In fact, it's not only necessary, it's essential as a Muslim. Mm. So if you have a child who is up to the age of 16, 17 years, right. it is incumbent, it is compulsory in fulfillment of the religious obligation as a Muslim. He or she has to fast. Mm. Now, if you deny such a person from fasting, you are virtually denying her from observing the five daily prayer. Because in terms of those pillars, they are equally important. So that is why I'm saying there can't be any excuse. Look, that child, if you listen to the parent where, who was interviewed by your station, the father said that the daughter has been fasting since the year of when she was eight years. 
So why would they prevent the girl from? And if you observe the interview the girl had, she was actually crying that she's been denied of practicing this. I think that the headmistress of that institution should be brought to order. This intolerant level must not be accepted. Look, this country has been very peaceful. Most of us attended mission schools. And I remember when I was attending Methodist, we went to read the hymn. We're not forced to go to the church, but we loved and enjoyed going to the church to read the hymn. When I went to teacher training college, we, we did all those things, even in the secondary school. People must not be denied those opportunities. And in an attempt to justify that, that unacceptable behavior by the headmistress right. and the management of the school, they said it is not only Muslims, even Christians we have entreated that they shouldn't. Christians are not, they are, the fasting is not compulsory. You can do it as a religious obligation. But Muslims, it is, but Muslims, it is compulsory that you engage in fasting. So if you deny anybody of fasting, you are denying that person of fulfilling the religious obligation, which is incumbent on him or her okay. as a Muslim. So very important points you've raised, and I'll just add this little this bit that uh, you mentioned the bit about joining the Christians for some religious practice. I think part of why we enjoy the sort of harmony. Yes. We have Christian-Muslim harmony. You would see uh, the Sheikh was at his 100th birthday yeah. going to Christ yeah. the King with Father Campbell and all of that. It's partly because of some of these things. And so when we co-mingle or intermingle like that, uh, then the barriers, whatever they are, fall. Yes. And then you realize that we are one people. I think that's something that we yes. ought to... Especially the boarding school continue. system. Where yes. they didn't and I guess all of us time. were there. Yes. I was in Bishop Herman. You and, see? Um, very, very clear. You heard me very, very clear that he made some point that even when he was teaching us uh, some of the uh, an islamic school he even stood there for the non-muslim because if look we have many islamic schools in ghana which even christians are attending i happen to be in azaria which is in kumasi where non-muslims are there on sundays they were allowed they were allowed to go to their churches why because that is their belief despite they are in an islamic school we can't force them we can't force them not to go to church on sunday yes yet they are monitored but we give them that chance to go to their churches this is fair to our democracy if we have somebody like this kind of headmistress i don't think she's even entitled to that headmistress because she is trying to bring a division in ghana and it is also going to what it bring an injury to our democracy our democracy we are trying to portray because ghana is as we know is a baking of what democracy so we are trying to maintain that because and without the religious tolerance we cannot maintain that sort of positions now you all know believe that islam is the second largest religion in ghana and if Sad things are popping up the issue petty petty issues of hijab petty issues of what which doesn't affect any school if as a child wearing hijab would not increase the school not decrease the school in fact it will even strengthen the bond between islam and christianity to showcase that muslims and christians are living in good and what good uh, and harmony why are you people so desperate to show they have bad emotions they have bad emotions against a religion which is very bad ghana is not in such already for such intolerance from such people who claim a position i don't think they deserve that headmistress must be brought to table must be dealt with because she is destroying because look we have many islamic schools and you can even see most of them allow the non-muslims to practice their faith which is very fair so i think that people who are in authority muslim clerks muslim scholars should stand up and defend these innocent children who have been denied of their rights of what worship in various institutions especially the issue of hijab is very very important the issue of hijab is very very important and it is the duty of all muslim leaders and allah will ask them without them taking action it is not about taking action and relax or saying talking no it's about standing up and moving petitions to flow less petitions flow in and out from from the public sector 
to some in, uh, some uh, people in authority so individuals in authority who can stand who has power to what make that decision less petition flows in our parliament less petitions flows in our parliament let the parliament knows our stand know what we want we our religion let's also preach our religion to the public because as far as people continue to be ignorant about your religion they'll continue to do things that i think you people may not like because they don't know what your religion entails so it is time for us to also try and portray our religion in the positive way not to showcase the other side because we all have our individual what ideas you understand so i think it's very uh, this is the to, the end of today's video please share the video to your loved ones share it let it sleep many people so that at least we all come together as a team and see how we can move ghana forward in uh, under the umbrella of what uh a religious what coexistence thank you very much i'm still abdul malik moro on this channel social of, uh, of islam media share the video to your loved one as i said earlier so that all your loved ones will also watch it and also benefit out of it much love assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh